super delighted to have Jonathan, our middle son, coming with us sailing today. It's been a long while since he's been with us on the boat, so it'll be lovely having him back. We have Jonathan on board with us! Woohoo! We are passing south of the ship's anchorage area in Dublin Bay. Our plan is to sail to the Kish Bank Lighthouse with Jonathan as crew. It's great having Jonathan back. John is now tightening up the main sheet to increase his speed and sail power, trying to top my speed over ground when I was on the helm. We're under full sail rather than a reefed sail, although John has set up the reef if needed. We tend to prefer to spill the wind instead by depowering the sail, releasing the main sheet. Why would you want to do that when you've got perfect wind? We've got 14 to 18 knots from the northeast and this is just beautiful sailing. Jonathan is now trimming the foresail, taking full advantage of every ounce of wind we can get. I'm delighted to see that he hasn't forgotten that you watch your sails when you are trimming. What a glorious, beautiful, sunny Sunday afternoon. See what I did there? It gave Jonathan a chance to get over to his seat on the other side of the cockpit. Well, John should be happy with Jonathan's help in the, that increase in speed as the banter goes on as Jonathan regales us with stories of his holidays. I absolutely love seeing our boat coming through waves like this. Ah, oh, so freeing. It's brilliant. A sailing we will go, a sailing we will go. Hey, oh, daddy, oh, a sailing we will go. Unfortunately, the camera doesn't pick up just how beautiful the coastline looks to the human eye, which is a pity. However, Jonathan is natural on the helm and has an iron stomach for sailing, so he's always welcome as crew. We are now an hour out from Dunleary, and as you can see, the, the crack and the banter continue between the lads. Such a bunch of messers. Always messing. <laughs> John is giving Jonathan a refresher in sailing and John reminds Jonathan to not have the sails flapping in the wind by coming too close into into the wind. Stay out of the red areas on the windex basically. Good to have you back John. Good, 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 good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> nice one Jake. At this rate, we will be at the Kish Lighthouse in jig time. Jonathan is outdoing his father on speed, <laughs> much to his uh, chagrin. <laughs> Look at the way that marker is bobbing around in the waves. Wow. Messrs. Christiani and Nielsen, Danish engineers, were contracted to design the Kish Lighthouse. Because of the severe Irish weather conditions, uh, the Kish Lighthouse had to be twice as strongly built as the largest of similar Swedish designs.
the lighthouse was built of reinforced concrete in the form of circular castles, inside of which would be the tower. When it was towed to its final site from Coal Harbour in Dunleary, the tower would be telescoped to its final height. Initially in 1963, the castle was damaged in a storm when it was sunk. When they raised the castle, it was decided to cover the top with a thick concrete slab and make it a buoyant base on which to build the new structure. The outer base castle has a 104 feet diameter and a three foot thick base slab. There are three concentric walls of varying heights and the greatest being 91 feet. These walls are locked by 12 radial walls forming sections that are flooded as required during the sinking operation. The tower itself is a self-contained unit of 12 floors built within the chasm. It is 100 feet tall, surmounted by 32 feet diameter helipad, protected by a safety net. On the spring tide of the 29th of June 1965, the tower was towed to its final location on the Kish Bank and set to rest on a level bank of stones prepared by divers. On the 27th of July 1965, the lower castle was flooded with water to float the tower, the 54 and a half feet. The final adjustments were made and then her, when vertical, the water was replaced by 18,000 tonnes of sand topped by concrete. The route we took was out of Dunleary, over to the Kish, passing over the Burford Bank, which is perfectly navigable for yachts, not for larger shipping. They must enter the Dublin Bay area through either the South uh, Traffic Separation Scheme or the North Traffic Separation Scheme. Most traffic comes in through the North. The container ship I pointed out earlier was coming in through the southern TSS so we slowed our progress to stay out of the area and we took down our foresail before making our way in after the ship had safely passed through. <laughs> 